Thank you for joining me today. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. How are you all doing? How are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. Life is life. Life is life. That's all I got to say. Anyway, um, if you're new here, if this is your first rodeo with me, hi, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the madness. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so welcome, and uh, by the way, my name is M, and you're watching Makeup Re. Do, 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 do. Um, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm channeling Bailey Sarian there with my made-up theme song. <laughs> But I, I don't think I'm cool enough for that. Anyway. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be just doing some makeup. I have a bunch of new things here, things that I haven't touched, things that I've purchased, things that have just been sitting in my collection that I haven't used at all. So I thought it'd be fun to do a video using all new products or mostly new products, and I'm just, I'm excited to try some new stuff, you know? If that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. By the way, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to click that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you can come back and hang out again with me in the future. That would be so fun, right? I'm cool enough for that, maybe? I don't know. Click the like button. Okay, let's go. All right, I'm gonna start off with a lip balm. I've been using this uh, for a couple of days, so it's not like I haven't tried it yet, but it is brand new. I got this recently in my Ipsy bag, the smaller one, not the deluxe one. This is from Hey Honey, and it's called Trick and Treat Lip Balm, and this is watermelon flavored and scented, and it smells amazing. It's like the Jolly Rancher type of watermelon. And uh, if you've never had a Jolly Rancher, just imagine it just being like a fruity. <laughs> My cats are fighting over the space by the window. It sounded like a little uh, engine getting started. Basically, it's a cat engine, you know. They get started, they can't stop. Are you quite finished? Sandy, are you quite pleased with yourself? Okay, I'm gonna show you guys on my cell phone because I can't move my camera. So there are my kitties. That's Sandy in the back and Butters. The one that you just heard doing the motorboat engine starting is the one in front. The mama cat who is mad, she's flicking her tail, that's Butters. And Sandy just took her spot, shoved her over, huh? Oh, look at that. She's just so pleased with herself. All right, cat cam, over. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> if you have cats, you know the struggle. It's like cat mom mode never dies. They act just like children sometimes where they get into stuff that they shouldn't, they fight, uh, they howl, they throw tantrums, they cry when they want a snack and they don't get the snack. So yes, the slip balm is very sweet tasting. What I like about it is that it doesn't feel sticky. It stays moisturizing for a long time. So. And I actually really like the brand Hey Honey, so, so, yeah. Okay, this one might shock you, or maybe not. I bought the Milani Eyeshadow Primer. I've never tried it before. I know Emily Noel raves about this. It's her favorite hands-down eyeshadow primer. And I picked this up because my Urban Decay Primer Potion has gone bad. It came out as this weird, like, watery substance, and I thought, Ew, I am not putting that on my eyeballs, so I need a new primer. So let's give this a try. It's tinted. I didn't realize it was tinted. Okay, interesting. I feel like it kind of counteracts some of the redness that I have on my eyelids. I feel like that looks nice, and it feels nice too. It dries down a little faster than the Urban Decay. You don't have to really blend that in. Emily Noel, I'm trusting you. Okay. As far as eyebrows, I'm going to quickly say what I'm using and then I'm going to fast forward because it's going to take me forever to do my brows. Oh my gosh, you guys got to see this. Cat cam number two. Mama cat is giving Winnie cat a bath. And then Miss Sandy is right there just like chilling out. Okie dokie. Any. Sorry for all the cat cam footage. I know Clara would like it because she's always asking me to show pictures of my kitties. So... Thumbs up, paws up for cute kitties. So going back to the brows, the brow pencil I am trying that I've never tried before. 
is from Benefit and it's called the Precisely My Brow Pencil. It's the one that comes with a little pointed cap like this. This one I hope is the right color. Oh, this is neutral deep brown, so that'll be perfect. Okay, brows are done. I will say that with this pencil, um, it does apply nicely. I like that it's not too creamy and not too hard at the same time. It, it disperses color pretty evenly, doesn't skip or anything. I will note that since it is brand new, it was cu bluntly cut, so there's kind of sharp edges around the pencil. Yeah, it runs through the brows nicely. I feel like I was able to do that in a pretty quick amount of time. It doesn't set too much where I can still, you know, kind of adjust and blend out as needed. I appreciate that this pencil does that, so it is a winner for me. So we've done the brows, I've got the primer on. Let's move into it. I don't do my face until after I do eyeshadow because I just don't. I always have issues with fallout or glitter or whatever, so I prefer doing that stuff after the fact. For the palette that I recently purchased, I haven't even swatched it yet, I just tore the tape off. And it's from Makeup Revolution and this is the palette. I um, was perusing Ulta because I did make a purchase at Ulta um, this, this month, yes this month. And this palette spoke to me. Not only is the case purple because, you know, purple is my favorite color, but the palette itself has some really pretty colors. Um, it's got so, a lot of purples in here, there's this bright electric Purp uh, bright, oh, that's purple apparently, I don't know how to tell my colors. Bright electric blue, there's some pinks, some neutral gold type of colors, a plum shade. Yeah, so this has a lot of really pretty colors that I'm excited to try. I haven't bought Makeup Revolution in quite a while, so yeah. Oh, and by the way, the name of this palette is, uh, what is this palette called? Oh, it's called Ultraviolet. So original. I could have guessed it because it's basic as you know what. Okay, so my chair keeps squeaking at me. The brushes I'm using today are not brand new. I'll just make that as a caveat to trying out new makeup that these are not new. Um, so I'm wearing black and white and basic so I can go as bold and funky as I want. It's always hard to decide when you have a palette like this what colors you want to do. Okay, so let me decide what focal color do I want to do. Do I want to do blue or this gold? Do I want to do pink? I really want to try that electric blue. So I'm going to do a look using the electric blue. I'm going to take Sandy, this top color in the corner here, which is a basic kind of cream color. Almost like, well, it's a good sand color. Use that all over the lid and mostly in the crease. Hmm. This is a, like a good neutralizing eyeshadow shade. If you have redness, that's the reason I am um, kind of applying this over the lid because even though that primer has a tint to it, uh, it didn't quite hide all the redness. And with blue, blues can bring out redness, so anything I can do to kind of minimize that redness will make that blue stand out and pop better. So now my eyes look very set. That plum shade is so pretty. Okay, let's swatch the blue really quick and see how that looks. That is bold and pretty. Okay, now let's see how it applies. Here are the two colors side by side. That blue kind of shears out, which I wasn't expecting. It looked like it would have been a foiled shade that would have been really just like popping. And I'm sure it would be with wetting my brush down. I think I'm going to use this bottom color here. This one is just a tad bit darker than Sandy. Like Graham Crackers is a name that I might use for it. Graham Crackers. If I ever had the opportunity to collaborate with any makeup brand that does eyeshadows, it would be so fun to name them. You know, like Graham Crackers for a neutral shade. Although, if I were to do a palette, I don't know that I would, you know, necessarily put a lot of neutral shades in there. But anyone can do a neutral palette. If I were to do a palette, it has to be fun, it has to be funky, it's got to be unique. I mean, that doesn't really sound like it's possible in an oversaturated uh, makeup space, but, you know, naming and the layout and design and packaging, all that stuff would be so fun, right? Yeah, it's nice. It's light, but it's, it's just enough there as a base where 
um, I can easily transition color into it. Okie dokie. Because of how sheer that blue actually is, I'm going to take just a tad bit of... Do I want the plum? Yeah, let's do the plum. I'll do this plum on the outer corner here. I'm just going to lay down that color. I'm not going to do a lot of blending. That's not as dark as I thought it would be. Let's see, will it build up? Maybe. Yeah, it blend. Oop, 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 there we go. It's actually perfect for the purpose I had for the shadow. I wanted to go light. It's pigmented, but it's just not as deep as I thought it would be. And in this kind of capacity, that's perfect because I didn't want it to be too dark. Have you all been watching any good TV shows? I haven't been watching a lot of TV lately. The only shows that I've been keeping up with are Grey's Anatomy, This Is Us, and, oh, and Law and Order SVU. Oh, did you see the episode with Stabler? He returned, and it was just so epic. And, oh, my, I was gutted over that episode. It was so sad. I won't give it away, but, oh. Benson and Stabler back together, a dream duo, however, she's the boss and he's still a detective. He didn't even make Sergeant, so anyway, just saying he had a bad attitude. But those two together were an amazing pairing. So when um, Chris Maloney, is that his name, left the show, I mean years and years ago at this point, I think it was season 12 and they're on season 21, 22 now. Anyway, that was so long ago, but you know, it had a ripple effect because they had this dynamic duo and then all of a sudden it was just a solo act. Mariska Hargate is just an incredible actress and she brings such life to that role. Um, so Olivia Benson, like hands down badass boss. Yeah, I love her. Anyway, they released a new Law & Order TV show and that's Law & Order uh, organized crime and I did watch the first episode I'm not sure if I'm sold on on organized crime yet it's definitely not the same feel as your typical law and order you know in law and order SVU or and criminal intent and the the original series there's a scene and then it will pause and do that dun dun and then um, it will move to a different um, location or a different scene. They don't do that in the new Law and Order. It feels more like a really modern drama, which is not a bad thing, but it doesn't quite have that same Law and Order feel that we're used to. So I'm not sure if I like it yet, but I need to watch the second episode and we'll see how that goes. And of course, uh, you know, with Olivia Benson being a guest star in that show, I mean, it's worth it to see those two together, but you know, things aren't good between them because he was a jerk and didn't tell her he was leaving like he just up and left and didn't tell her didn't tell anyone except Captain Cragen can you tell like I'm a super fan of Law & Order SVU I've been watching it since I was maybe 12 or 13 so that was 20 years ago um I, I just realized I've been just talking and adding more color and nothing really changed on this so take what you will from it I'm I'm guessing this is as much pigment and payoff that this particular shadow is going to get but I keep looking at it and it seems so uneven this side does not look as blended looks a little bit more pigmented right there so let's see if I can get this side to match okay I've been jabber jaws enough I haven't really been doing anything makeup wise aside from just pack it on color let's do the blue next I'm going to apply it with my finger and see how that goes Ooh, oh it's okay I gotta show you okay do you see how it's kind of indented? It's more of like a cream. It's not really a shadow, like a, a powder shadow. That makes more sense now as to why it's kind of sheer. But it dries down to a powder. That's kind of cool, but I'm not sure about it. So that's with the finger. It's not the most pigmented. So let's. I'm going to see with the brush. I didn't really bring the right kind of brush. It's a teeny tiny concealer brush. But maybe this will work. I'm just going to try it with that. Oh, it's very jelly-like. I don't know. That's not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's still pretty. Don't get me wrong. It still shows up. But it's not what I expected. In the palette, it looks like bold, popping, and then you get it on the lid and it's like, meh. Um, I'm just going to keep doing this motion then. You really have to dig into this product to get this much payoff. I'll be honest. You've seen how much I've been at this. I almost think it would be a good eyeliner, not maybe not as much of a 
an eyeshadow. So going back to the other shows I'm watching, so Grey's Anatomy, oh my gosh, the whole kind of in-between death sequence with Meredith what had me on the edge for a while, but it seems like they're not going to, you know, kill her off, which, you know, if they kill her off, that's the end of the show. I'm hoping it lasts for at least one more season, but I feel like this might be the end of Grey's Anatomy because there's some storylines that just seem to feel like they're wrapping up. Okay, here's the thing. If Sandra O oh returns, then we know it's the end because they've already brought back Cry Kryler Lee, who, I think that's her name, Kryler Lee, who played um, Meredith's little sister who died. Uh, they brought back Mark and they brought Derek in and they brought in O'Malley. It was just a heart-wrenching thing. So they brought all of them back. The only one they didn't bring back was her mom which was interesting. I'm surprised they didn't do that. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, you know? Anyway, I'm done talking about Grey's. How about This Is Us? Let's talk about This Is Us. So I'm kind of bored with This Is Us. I don't know. I feel like their storyline has just kind of tapered out. Um, it's another show where I feel like they're wrapping up. You know, there's not a lot of conflict. Their conflicts seem to be resolved. They occasionally do that kind of flash forward sequence where everyone's meeting at the cabin and it looks like Rebecca isn't on her deathbed and they're all ready to come. You stay in focus. That they're all ready to come and say their goodbyes, but I feel like they're leading up to that soon. Handmaid's Tale is coming, I think it's the end of April sometime in the next maybe week or so and I am so excited I mean they left us on a cliffhanger like does she live does she die obviously with the trailers she lives but what's gonna happen now that all the kids are gone and they're in Canada and what's gonna happen with Serena and and um you know uh Fred I almost forgot his name and I have to remember <clears throat> in the meantime I've been just kind of binge watching episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine because I am a Trekkie nerd at heart and I really love the Star Trek franchise. I binge watched all of The Next Generation which brought me back to my childhood because I used to watch that with my dad. I love that they reprised Worf's character and brought him onto Deep Space Nine. I'm on the second to last season and I'm almost done with that. So I'm kind of sad and um, I'm not ready to say goodbye. Do you ever feel like this sense of sadness when you're about to end a series and you know there are no more episodes to come? It's like this feeling of dread and you're like, no, you're not supposed to end. You're part of my life now. You're part of my friend circle. Even though you know nothing about me and you're fake, you're in a fake reality nothing exists beyond the tv screen of your world but i feel like i'm in your world and now i'm feeling like you're leaving me behind and it sucks it sucks you're not allowed to leave me anyway um let's play with some more shadows right okay i kind of want to see what this gold does i was wondering if it was going to be another cream and it's not but Ooh, that's pretty. That would be kind of pretty in the inner tear duct. But I kind of want to keep this jewel toned and cool. So there's a fire alarm going off and now a fire truck's coming. I hope there's no real fire. Our fire alarm system in my condo area has been on the fritz. So they had to replace the whole thing, which was a fun thing of its own. And now a fire alarm's going off, so I'm hoping it's not... I mean, I hope it's a fluke, but I hope it's not, you know what I mean? Because that means I have to redo it, or it means it's not working. But I hope it's working, but I, I don't know. I'm in a conflicted state right now. I don't know what I want. Okay, let's look at Serene. We need some serenity here. Ooh, that's pretty too. That's a really pretty pearl kind of gold. And then I'll look at this... Ooh, these two lighter purples here... This one is idyllic, and then this one is ambient. So one's a little bit more pink than the other. There's not a huge difference between them, but there's just subtle. Obviously, this one's a little bit more pink. This one's a little bit more lilac, lavender. Let's do the lavender. Let's do some fun. So we'll do idyllic. And I'm going to apply that into this inner tear duct area. That is really pretty. Do you see that? Oh, pretty full. Because this brush is so small, it's taking me a couple of swatches to get it get it built up. 
there now you can see it a little bit better I'm I'm digging this I am digging this so the plum kind of adds some warmth but it also pairs really well with that blue I wasn't expecting that, but I like it. Let's just take a brush and blend out those edges a little bit more. I'm gonna take a minute to check out the fire alarm situation. <sighs> so it turns out it's just the fire panel. So I'm glad there's no real fire, but that also means that the fire alarm is just gonna keep going off. So I have stuff I need to do, so I'm just gonna finish, so hopefully it's not too disruptive to this video. If it is, I am so sorry. Feel free to exit. Okay, well, I'm going to play with this some more and give it some more love because I think even though that blue took a bit to build up, I think it's a fun palette. Next new product is this. I've had this for a while, I'll be honest, and I might have used it once. I don't remember. This is the L'Oreal Flash Cat Eye infallible now this is like something that you're supposed to be able to like help line with I don't know we'll see if that works because my eyes are a little uneven so it's a felt tip pen Doop. so let's just do it do I want to try this though <laughs> oh it skipped and that's a really big wing oops I didn't mean to go out that far but hey when my eyelid comes back down it kind of just does this weird like swoosh thing. It doesn't even look like a wing. It just looks like I have a tail. Okay, that kind of leaves a trace behind, so you really have to rub. I was hoping I could just get it off a little bit, but look at that. It left a big smear on my face. I'm going to use a primer to kind of clean this up. Take a little bit on this, t this tissue, and I'm going to use that to kind of clean up the rest of that. That way there's some sort of emollient as opposed to just water. So quick trick if you are having a hard time removing something from your eye, use a primer. Don't use a concealer, use a primer because the primer itself, if it's blended in well, will not mess up your makeup. Whereas concealer, what happens is, is it gets flaky, crusty, and gross, and then you have uneven eyes. And it looks it doesn't look as pretty as you would like it to look. So just quick pro tip right there. And there we go, that looks better. So it's nice and pigmented. I, I'm enjoying this pen. I don't see anything I don't like about it. Should I use this? I feel like if I do, it's going to be at the wrong angle. But we'll see if it works. Well, kind of. Sort of. Well, they're somewhat even. I feel like the left side is just a tad bit higher. But they're straight. I'm not going to complain. If it's not perfectly symmetrical, I don't care. Unless it's like really noticeable, I just, I leave it. Because no one's going to be staring at my eyes that much, you know. And if they are, then it's a little creepy. And at that point, they're too close. I might give them a little sucker punch saying, hey, COVID. Ooh, I almost forgot. I have this. Um, this is from Koki. And it's called Crystal Infusion. I don't know that this color is going to go with this. But I'm going to see... I got this in my Ipsy bag a couple days ago, and I haven't tried this yet. And it's just like a glitter topper. Um, ooh, it's got kind of this green tone. There's some purples in there, but it's kind of like this copper, almost rose gold base. I don't know that this will go with this green, though. Or green. I don't know if it'll go with the blue. Let's try a little teeny bit and see. Put it on the center. Oopsie. I should have used a brush for that. <laughs> No, I got it in my eyeliner. I'm going to have to redo the eyeliner in that center part. Oh, well. I don't think I'm liking that as much. I should have just left it. I will say that that blue is kind of breaking down a little bit. It is kind of not staying in place. So I'm not sure that this blue is going to look that great in a little while anyway. But I am going to fix the glitter because that doesn't look so good. It kind of bunched up and I think it's because of this tech the texture of this blue shadow underneath Ooh, actually it kind of looks cool when I put the blue over the top because it's kind of got a little silver tint to it uh, do you ever do that do you ever kind of think oh, I'm an experiment and then you realize your experiment might not have been the best idea yeah this is how I should have done it sheared out this side just got clumpy too fast so I'm gonna leave it as is like on that side just kind of tap, tap, tap on that side. See if I can even them up. Eh, that's as good as, that's good enough for me. I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to fix the liner and we're going to be good. Okay. I'm done. I'm done playing with that. No more. Smack, smack, done. 
Okie dokie, let's move on. For mascara, I have this new to me Milk Kush Mascara. I got this also in a Nipsey bag. Ooh, look at that wand. It is a really thick, burly wand. And it has a really, I'm just going to sound weird, a really creamy tip. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, 12 year old boy humor. Okay, well, let's see how this bad boy plays out. Because um, usually the bigger barrel ones are a little intimidating because I have small eyes. So I have to be careful and I really have to make sure I tip my head back so I don't get mascara all over my eyelid. Of course, mascara is so subjective, but for me, I don't feel like it's building them up as much. It combs through them nicely, but it's not a thick formula. For as thick as this wand is, I would expect the formula to kind of match it. But I'll build it up with a second coat here in a second and see how it fares. It's barely noticeable, isn't it? It's not even the liner. And my lashes can usually get pretty voluminous. Let's see how quickly they dried. Oh, it's still a little wet, so it's not a quick dry formula. But let's try building it up regardless and seeing if that does anything. Okay, that's a little better. That's a little better. They're kind of like flutter lashes. They're not like bold, falsy lashes. And I guess that's okay because I do have the showstopper blue on my lids and I don't want that to be too obscured by lashes. I'm not disliking that. So we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and move on to the face. I'm not going to wear foundation today, but I'm going to do concealer. Um, this first product, I don't remember using this. This has been in my drawer for a hot minute. They took out the alarm off. Um, this is from Pixi and it's their Flawless and Poreless Primer. Kind of a light cream color. I'm going to apply that here on the cheekbones and under the eyes. That's where I need the most help. <laughs> it's a nice dewy finish. I will note though, just looking at the fine lines on my forehead, it doesn't seem to minimize the fine lines. It would, for me, highlight fine lines because the light's reflecting there and it draws your attention in. So just beware if you do have a dewy primer to only apply it where you're planning to put concealer or foundation. Don't apply it all over your face because sometimes it can bring extra light where you don't want it. It's nice and powdery, but it has a little bit of stick to it as well. So for concealers, I picked up the Juvia's Place Concealer. This one's a number 18. It is way too dark for me, but I did that on purpose because I wanted to try out kind of a darker shade with more of like a orangey peach tone. And this is for color correcting. But I'm concentrating this right where I have the most, um, the most purple. I'm going to let that sit and kind of marinate for a second and kind of dry down. I've heard good things about the Juvia's Place concealers, so we'll see how it fares. I'm going to use my brush here and just kind of blend it in. I'm going to keep it just in this little triangle area. And it looks weird. It looks very weird, but trust me, it'll work. So then next, I'm going to do an, a lighter concealer. This one's not new, and I've used it many times before, but I just I want to use it up, so... It's there. It's there. So this is from ColourPop. It is the number light. And I'm just doing a light dab. And I got blemishes around my nose. Because my eczema decided to flare up. I'm going to do a little bit here around the mouth. A little bit here for good measure. And here for good measure. Blend it all in. I'm going to switch to a paddle brush just to kind of wrap it around that cheek and blend it out across the face because it's still a little dark. We're gonna make it work. Now I do have a little bit more color down here that doesn't match the rest of my face, but that's okay because I'm gonna use a bronzer to kind of help balance everything out. Let me quickly powder. I'm gonna use um, the KVD Locket Powder. This one's not new to me. I've had this for a while as well but I don't have any new translucent powders, so we're just gonna go with something I haven't used in a long time. Yeah, that dewy primer is showing up under that concealer that I applied on my forehead, so I kinda like that, but I am gonna have to dust for shine. But I'm gonna warm up the rest of the face here. I'm gonna use the Fenty Matchstick. This one's in Walnut. This one's a warm, kinda contour, bronzy shade. I need to get the cooler one for actual contouring, but for bronzing purposes, this will work. And I'm going to use just a foundation brush, I guess, to blend it. I realized that I forgot to grab a blending brush for this. I'm going to try to make other brushes work. If 
but I'm not the biggest fan of the stick and how it's applying. And it's not even because of the powder. The powder shouldn't really have an effect because I didn't apply the powder out in the peripheral of my face. Not really anyway. And I don't have a powder here. So it's not blending out nicely. I look like I have some lines on my face, which I don't like. So I think the trick will be applying the stick directly to a brush and then using the brush to blend it instead so that there's no lines. But anyway, that's that for the Fenty one. I'm going to go over the top of that with a bronzer. I don't have any other new bronzers. I'm just going to use my Wet n Wild bronzer. And this one's called Sunset Strip Tease. Use that same powder brush from before to apply it. And this will just kind of lock that all in place and give a little bit more oomph. Kind of blend in some of that orange so it's not as orange. Because that orange is pretty orange. At least we've had a lot of sun here so that all this bronzer looks normal. It's not like, you know, middle of winter and me bronzing up like I've been out in the sun all day. Okay, for blush, I forgot that I had a cream product for this. So I put, put that powder on. So this one's new from Milani and it's called their Supercharged Cheek and Lip Multi-Stick. This one is called Peach Thrill. Looks really pretty and promising. Ooh, that's very glossy. I'm going to just take it onto my two fingers here and just kind of dab that on and then blend with my fingers out. Ooh, that's really pretty. Yeah, that blends nicely and it's just a nice light color. And it looks a little bold and then you can blend it out with your fingers. You don't necess necessarily need the brush to do it. Hmm, I like that. I'm going to try it on the lips really quick. That's a pretty color. I don't want to wear that on the lips today because I have another new thing. But I will say that my finger lifted a little bit of that powder under the eye. So I'm just going to quickly kind of touch up there. I just realized that I don't have a highlighter with me and I didn't have anything new. So I'm just going to dip into maybe this light pink shade right in the middle here. I have to be very strategic about it. And oh yes, I like that. It's very pretty. And then I'll brush a little bit here too. Kind of do all the high points of the face of this lighter purple. I like that. It looks really pretty. Especially with that peach. It's kind of like a marriage of the two. Unfortunately, I do have that orange line there, so I think I might remove that in a little bit, but we'll see. Okay, so the lip product that I bought is not a new product per se. This is the Maybelline Superstay ink, but it is a new color. I don't have I didn't have this one before, and it's number 65, Seductress. It's a nude shade, and it's a really pretty one at that. So I thought nude lips with the jewel-toned eye would be perfect. That's pretty. It needs a minute or two to dry down, but I like that. It's coolish. It's kind of a pinky nude, and I think it works with this makeup look really nicely. Ha! <sighs> okay, that's that. All these products here, there's so many things that I tried today for the first time. New things, old things, and I'm pretty pleased with what look I have today, except for the bronzer piece or the contour bits that are streaky. But I uh, need to use a different brightening concealer because I it just kind of blended a little too much into the orange. But other than that, it's not too bad. What do you think? Anyway, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay electric. Mwah. Bye. Okay, it matches my skin.